OK, so we're going to find the area of the region defined by these inequalities in the xy plane. And our approach involves breaking this up into some smaller, simpler steps to try and sketch this region. Then once we've got a sketch of the region, we'll actually evaluate the area of it. So if we first of all focus on this second inequality, that the modulus of x minus y has got to be less than or equal to 3, we can try to sketch this region. Then we'll sketch the region for the other inequality. Then we just need to find where those two regions overlap. And that will tell us the points which satisfy both inequalities in the overlap. So throughout this problem, it's going to be really helpful to think of the modulus of the difference between two numbers as just telling you what is the difference between those two numbers. So here, the modulus of x minus y being less than or equal to 3, this is saying that x and y have to be within 3 of each other. And this is really helpful for actually sketching this region because it tells us that y has got to be less than or equal to x plus 3 in order for them to be within 3 of each other. And also y has got to be greater than or equal to x minus 3, otherwise it wouldn't be within 3 of x. So then we can sketch this region. We know y is less than or equal to x plus 3 and y is greater than or equal to x minus 3. So if we just draw in y equals x plus 3 and y equals x minus 3, in order for y to be between these two, we're looking at the region just in between here. So this region does go on forever, both up and down, but we can now find where this overlaps with our second region to try and work out what is the area of the region satisfying both of our inequalities there. So for our second inequality, it looks quite unpleasant how we've got the modulus of something within the modulus of something else. But fortunately, there's a nice way we can deal with this, which is just to consider two different cases where, first of all, if x plus y is positive, so if x plus y is greater than or equal to zero, then this tells us that the modulus of x plus y is actually just equal to x plus y. And when we consider x plus y negative, the modulus of x plus y just becomes the negative of x plus y. So this is really useful because in this case where x plus y is greater than or equal to zero, our first inequality then just becomes the modulus of x plus y minus y is less than or equal to the modulus of x minus y. You can see there that our two y's cancel. So then we can write this, instead of writing it as the modulus of x, we'll actually write it as the modulus of x minus 0 is less than or equal to the modulus of x minus y. So this is keeping up this idea of the modulus of x minus 0 is the distance from x to 0. And here, the distance from x to 0 is less than the distance from x to y. So we're saying x has got to be closer to 0 than it is to y. So we can start to sketch this. We'll actually consider the picture will look slightly differently if y is positive or negative. So first of all, if y is positive, if we imagine this on a number line, we fix a positive value of y. So it's positive, so it'll be over to the right. So we'll have 0, we'll have y. Then in order for x to be closer to 0 than it is to y, it would just need to be less than or equal to y over 2. So anything over here, and then we would also extend off to the left there as well. So we're looking at the region x is less than or equal to y over 2. But it'll be slightly nice if we just rearrange this for sketching the region in a sec as y is greater than or equal to 2x for our first region. So when y is positive, we're looking at y is greater than or equal to 2x in order for this inequality to be satisfied. And we can do the same sort of thing when y is negative. We actually get just the reverse of this picture. y would be over to the left on our number line, and 0 would be to the right of y. So in order for x to be closer to 0 than it is to y, we now actually want x to be greater than or equal to y over 2. So we've got x greater than or equal to y over 2, which rearranges to become y is less than or equal to 2x. So you can see we've got y has to be bigger than 2x when y is positive, and y has got to be less than or equal to 2x when y is negative. And we can now try to sketch all of this region. So don't forget that we have imposed that x plus y is greater than or equal to 0, so y has got to be greater than or equal to negative x. So this helps us just, we only need to consider half of the plane here, really. So this is the line y equals negative x. So we're only interested in things above this line in order for y to be bigger than negative x or in order for x plus y to be bigger than zero. 
So now if we look at the first of all where y is positive, we need y greater than or equal to 2x. So let's just draw in the line y equals 2x. This is going to be really helpful for us. So we've got y equals 2x, and we want y to be bigger than 2x when y is positive. So in order for y to be positive, we're just above the x-axis. So we're now looking at this region where we're above the line y equals 2x. We're also above the x-axis, and we're also above this line y equals minus x. So we get this slice of the plane here, which would, again, continue on forever. And that covers the case where y is positive. So now when y is negative, we want, first of all, we need to be below the line y equals 0, below the x-axis. We still need to be above this line y equals minus x in order for our x plus y to be greater than or equal to 0. And we also need to be below the line y equals 2x in order for y to be less than or equal to 2x. So we're below y equals 2x, we're below the x-axis, and we're above the line y equals minus x. So this gives us the slice of the plane here. And we'd also, we could include the x-axis here because when y is actually equal to 0, you'd have x minus 0, modulus of that is less than or equal to the modulus of x minus 0, which would be satisfied, but that doesn't really affect the area here. So we're only really interested in these two triangular regions, which do carry on forever, but hopefully when we overlap these with the other inequality, that region, it should give us a nice finite region whose area we'll be able to calculate. So now we've only covered half of this inequality, we've only covered the case where x plus y is positive, so now let's consider what happens when x plus y is negative. So here when we take the modulus of x plus y, this is just going to become the negative of x plus y, so our first inequality turns into the modulus of minus x minus y take away y is less than or equal to the modulus of x minus y. So we can actually multiply all of this inside the modulus by negative 1. That isn't going to change the modulus of the number. So we can write this as the modulus of it be x plus 2y. We'll write it as x minus minus 2y so that we can say this is the distance between x and minus 2y. And this has still got to be less than or equal to the distance between x and y. So we're saying that x has now got to be closer to minus 2y than it is to y. And again, we get slightly different pictures if y is positive or negative. So when y is positive, on our number line, we want x to be closer to negative 2y than it is to y. So we've got y here, we've got minus 2y over here. Then halfway between these will be minus y over 2. In order for x to be closer to the minus 2y in this half, we would need x needs to be less than or equal to minus y over 2. And then if we rearrange this, multiply by negative 2, this would also change the sign of the inequality, so we'd end up with y is less than or equal to negative 2x, in this case where y is positive. And we can do the same thing when y is negative, but our picture is now the other way round, so we've got y would be negative, so minus 2y would be positive over on the right hand side. And again, halfway between these would be minus y over 2. In order for x to be closer to minus 2y than it is to y, we would need x to be over on the right hand side, so we need x is now greater than or equal to minus y over 2, which becomes y is greater than or equal to minus 2x. When we make y the subject there, we need to change the sign of the inequality again. So now we can actually sketch this whole region where x plus y is negative. So we start off just by drawing, first of all, if x plus y is negative, then we need y needs to be less than negative x. So if we draw in y equals negative x, we're on this side of this line, so on the underside of y equals minus x. Now if we look at where y is greater than 0, we need y to be less than or equal to minus 2x. So if we just draw in our line y equals minus 2x, like this, then we need to be, first of all, y is less than or equal to this when y is positive. So we can also just label, we've got the y equals 0, the x-axis, so we need y to be positive, so we're on the above the line y equals 0, but we need y to be less than or equal to minus 2x, so we're beneath this line, and we're also beneath the line y equals minus x. So we're only actually in this triangular region here in the end, for the case where y is positive. So now when y is negative, 
we need, first of all, we need to be below the x-axis in order for y to be negative. We're still underneath this line, y equals minus x. And finally, we also need y to be greater than or equal to minus 2x. So we're above this line, y equals minus 2x. So we only get quite a small region here, a thin slice. So then this gives us the whole region where x plus y is less than zero. But remember, we were actually working with this inequality in two different cases. We can combine these two regions now to tell us the region that satisfies this inequality. First of all, when x plus y is greater than or equal to zero, let's draw in the line y equals 2x. So then you can see we get this sandwich between y equals minus x and y equals 2x. So that would be between this line, y equals minus x and y equals 2x. We'd gain all of this region here in blue from our first case where x plus y is positive. And then we also have the region sandwich between y equals zero, the x-axis, and y equals minus x. That would give us this region here, shaded in blue. So actually the whole region which satisfies this inequality, having broken it up into the two different cases based on the sign of x plus y, we can see now we actually get these two larger triangular regions. So now we'll have a look at how to overlap this with the region for our first inequality, then we should eventually be able to find the area of this region. And now we're finally ready to see what this region looks like by finding the intersection of these two regions we found. So we start with this top left part. We need to be above the x-axis and we want to be above y equals 2x, but then this is going to be constrained from above that we need to be below the line y equals x plus 3. So you'll see we actually end up with this triangular shaded region here for our first half. So this is all we get left of this region when we take the intersection of it with the other inequality region. And for the bottom right piece, we need to be below the y-axis and above the line y equals minus 2x. And then this is going to be constrained that we need to be above the line y equals x minus 3. So in order to be below the y-axis, above the line y equals x minus 3, and also above the line y equals minus 2x, we just get this small triangular region here as well. So it now just involves finding the area of these two triangles in order to find the area of this region. So we start with this triangle at the top, first of all. We can actually work out the coordinates of each of these points. So we know that we've got the origin here, so 0, 0, and here this is where y equals x plus 3 meets the x-axis, so this is minus 3, 0. So we can work out the width of this triangle is 3, then we can work out the perpendicular height from the y-coordinate of this vertex at the top. So this is where y equals 2x meets the line y equals x plus 3. So if we just solve now x plus 3 equals 2x, you see that x is equal to 3. And then when x is 3, just substituting this into either, you get y is 6. We've got the point 3, 6 here. And what's really important there is the y-coordinate is 6, so we're saying that the perpendicular height of this triangle is 6, its width is 3, so we just do base times height divided by 2. 3 times 6 divided by 2 gives us an area of 9 units squared for this triangle at the top. And let's do the same thing for the triangle at the bottom. So we've got the origin as the top left corner there with coordinates 0, 0. This coordinate here is where y equals x minus 3 meets the x-axis. So this is where x is 3 and y is 0. And finally, our point at the bottom is where y equals minus 2x meets the line y equals x minus 3. So if we solve x minus 3 equals minus 2x, you'll see that we get x equals 1. Then just substituting x equals 1 into either of these, we get y is minus 2. So we've got 1 minus 2 of the coordinates for the bottom point there. So we can again use the width here is going to be 3, and then the perpendicular height is going down from 0 to minus 2 for our y coordinates, so the height would be 2 units. So we do 3 times 2 divided by 2, we get an area of 3 units squared, just from base times height divided by 2. So then you can see that the total area of the region which satisfies these inequalities is 9 plus 3, or 12 units squared as the final area for this region.